Now in this segment of the video, I'm going to show you how to field dress, how to skin, how to quarter, and how to butcher your deer. And uh, I brought this deer into the garage and we're going to do everything in my garage. You can field dress out in the field. As a matter of fact, I recommend it because they're so heavy, but I wanted to bring it into the garage for a demonstration. So I've got two knives here. Grab this one. This is a fillet knife and I use this one uh, for part of the field dressing. And then I have my regular hunting knife and this is a skinner knife. It has a skinner hook on it. I really recommend those. I've also got a pair of gloves. Now these are rubber gloves or latex gloves you can get at any hardware store. I don't always wear gloves if I'm cleaning a deer and I don't have any broken areas on, on my skin. But the Department of Natural Resources recommends that you use latex gloves. Some people have a real concern about chronic wasting disease and um, definitely want to protect yourself. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fillet knife to cut out the anal area. Now what you want to do is remove everything that's inside the deer from the throat all the way to the anus. All the digestive system and all of the uh, respiratory system and all of uh, the cardio system. You want to take everything out of the deer and you want to protect the meat by unloading all of the, uh, all of the insides of the deer so that they don't break or, or get onto the meat. So we'll start by cutting out the anal area. Notice I'm just cutting a circle. Keep some paper towels with you. It's a good thing. I want to cut all that skin loose. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a twister tie to tie that off. Now you can use a piece of string. That'll tie that off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slit this deer's throat right here. And I'm going to actually take, take the esophagus out from the throat down. Now the reason I do this is because sometimes deer will have gastric juices in their esophagus all the way up here. If you cut that right here low and you and there's there's uh, juices or foam in here that will run back into the cavity of the deer. So I always start up here. Here's the esophagus, and I'm right there at that. And what I will do is I will work my way down all the way to where the esophagus, all the way to where the esophagus meets the chest bone, where it meets the um, the bones right here in the in the front, the sternum. So that's where we're going to go with that. I'm going to loosen all this up in here. And then when I uh, open everything up, I'll be able to pull the esophagus and the, and the uh, large intestine out and dump it out the side of the deer. Now for the rest of this field dressing job, I'm going to be using my regular hunting knife. 
This one's got a skinning hook on it, this hook right here at the top, and I'll be able to run that down and open that um, cavity up without puncturing the internal organs. I recommend that you get a really good knife. Make sure that it's really sharp. Now what I'm going to do here, this is a doe, so I'm going to take out the udder. And if it was a buck, you'd want to cut out the testicles. And I'm just going to cut around and it will remove just like a sack. All right, now I'm ready to open this deer up. We're going to take out all the entrails. We'll be ready then to hang it and skin it. Now where I want to cut is right up here where the sternum is, or where the um, center of the chest is, where the ribs come together. And you'd want to be very careful with your first cut because you do not want to puncture any of the stomach. And the stomach will be swollen because the bacteria that are in the stomach as soon as this animal has been uh, taken, as soon as it's down in the field, uh, there will be gases released and it will cause the stomach to expand and it will make it very, very easy to break. Now I'm going to use my gutting hook and I'm going to open this up. I'm opening this up here to the rib cage area. There's a diaphragm, which is a thin muscle that's a wall between the lungs and heart area where the lungs, heart, and liver are, and the stomach and small and large intestine. Now that's going to be a, uh, a layer of skin that we're going to need to cut loose in order to pull all of this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up a little bit. Now on a smaller dough, sometimes you can actually cut the whole ca chest cavity open. The Department of Natural Resources recommends that you not cut through bone if you're concerned about chronic wasting disease. I cut through bone very little, but primarily I, I don't cut through a lot of bone because an elderly man who taught me how to clean deer said that the more bone you cut through, the more wild uh, flavor you get in the meat. So I try not to cut through bone uh, when I'm cleaning also. You can leave this entire chest uh, area uh, closed because we've disconnected the esophagus. When I open it up, I'll be able to pull the esophagus through without having to cut any of the skin that's on the rib cage, and I don't have to cut the rib cage. So that's the way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one. Now I flip this deer over so I can cut the other side of the diaphragm. <clears throat> Almost there. These dark spots along the, uh, the esophagus area are lymph nodes. Now if you're going to save the meat on the neck, which it's, it's good meat, but it's kind of difficult to get to, you're going to want to make sure that you cut out all of the lymph nodes around the esophagus. And there are lymph nodes in the legs of the deer that I'm going to show you later, but you want to make sure that all the lymph nodes are cut out because they'll make the meat strong. So those little dark dots are the lymph nodes. Now I've pulled everything out of the inside of this deer. We've left the chest cavity intact, left the skin on, didn't cut through any of the bones. I pulled the large intestine out from the anal area and we'll leave everything here. We'll be able to now hang this deer. I'll be able to skin it, quarter it, and we'll continue on with the process.
It may look like a really difficult process, but if you can do a nice job field dressing your deer, you're three quarters of the way there. The rest is relatively easy. It's not as uh, tedious. Now that you've gotten the deer field dressed, you need to get it in and get it uh, registered at your local Department of Natural Resources or at your local convenience store where they register deer. Then you're going to want to get the skin off of this deer the very day that you shoot it. We're going to hang this deer with its head down and then I'm going to show you how to skin, skin the deer and quarter it and then we're going to go into my kitchen and I'm going to show you how to cut it up, butcher it, how to package it and then later in the video I'm going to show you how to cook it. So take care of your meat. You'll be glad you did. It'll make for delicious meals for the future. Well, I showed you how to field dress the deer. Uh, I tagged it on site and then we took it in and got it registered. It's back in my garage. My garage is like a lot of people's garage. It's used for parking cars in and keeping stuff in. And we don't have a butcher shop at my house, but you can take care of your meat, make sure that it's clean and, and well prepared using your garage. I put some plastic down on the floor. I do have one special piece of equipment which is a come along that was given to me. And uh, a lot of the uh, videos you watch, if you see anything about butchering, it'll always have special equipment. And you don't have to have special equipment except for the come along in order to be able to butcher your deer. I'm using really sharp knives. These are uh, Chicago cutlery and that is the one piece of equipment that you do not want to scrimp on. This is a, a nice knife set that I've had for a long time. You get a steel that's in your uh, butcher block and you want to make sure that you hit that steel a few times with your blade of your knife. The blade of your knife has thousands of micro serrations on it that bend over when you cut through meat and you want to straighten those up and you can feel when you run your thumb along the edge of that you can tell whether or not those those serrations are bent over you want it to be really really sharp and uh, keep a sharp knife it'll make your butchering process go really quickly and there's nothing better for as a tool that you can use than a sharp knife Again, I'm going to be using latex gloves. There's a lot of concern about chronic wasting disease nowadays, and so I put gloves on. You don't have to worry about uh, any type of pathogens that the uh, deer might have, and it's just a safety precaution that's really inexpensive, so you can do that. I'm using a simple plastic table that I picked up at a discount store uh, to set my tools on and to work off of. You can buy these, and I love using a, uh, this type of table because I can cut directly on this table. Later when I'm butchering the deer, I'll use this table. And to make sure that every surface is clean, I start out by using vinegar. Uh, you can also use a 50-50 solution of chlorine bleach and water, and that'll make sure that all the bacteria is killed. You can wipe it down, and it'll be ready for cutting on next time. It's a great surface to work on. Again, we're working not in a professional butcher shop, but we're making sure that our conditions are clean and sanitary so that your meat can be super, super uh, good and, and uh, uh, make delicious meals. So you can do that right in your garage. Now a friend of mine gave me a fancy metal spreader here. Before I got this, um, I used a board that had a nail on each end and a rope going from it that I hung onto my my cable. So you don't have to have fancy equipment. What I'm going to be doing is cutting the, a slot between the tendon on the back of the leg and the bone. And that's going to give me a, a place to hold these legs open on the back. Now, the reason I'm hanging this deer up with its mouth down is because you want your, your any juices, gastric juices that might happen to be in the interior of the deer, you want them to drain out um, on the neck of the deer. Uh, you don't want them draining 
onto your hindquarters, which are some of the best meat that you have, or you don't want them draining down on your tenderloins, which are on the inside of the cavity. So it's best to hang that deer uh, with its head down. I've seen a lot of people that hang them with their head up, but that's, uh, that's more likely to ruin the meat. I've hung the deer uh, to where the back quarters are about uh, eye level for me. What we're going to do is we're going to skin this deer from the back down and ultimately we'll have a, a pile of skin on the, on the ground and then I'll take it off at the neck. Um, what you want to do is you want to use your knife to cut through the skin but not through the meat. And we're going to cut around the legs and then we're going to slit it down to the center and then we're going to work it off the back quarters and then work it down its back. Now when I get to this tendon in the back, I want to make sure that I'm running my blade underneath between the skin and the tendon. You can see the tendon right there. It's best to protect your meat if you run your knife blade underneath the skin facing out. Remember, you're using a sharp knife, and if it'll cut that skin, it will also cut your hand. So it's really important that you take your time and do it right. It's very important that you get the skin off of your deer, even if you're going to let the, the meat hang, because the skin will bring a wild flavor to your meat. An elderly man who was in his 70s told me that little bit of a secret and uh, it really pays off to get the skin off of your deer. Do this one. Again, this, what I'm showing you in preparing this meat I'm not a butcher, I'm a hunter, and I'm showing you what my wife and I do in order to have venison for the year. And if you follow these techniques that I'm showing you, you'll be able to have a, a lot of good meat and you'll be able to uh, save yourself the price of going to a butcher. Peel that off. Cut the tail off here. <clears throat> there we go. Another nice thing about skinning it before it's hung up very long is skinning a deer is a lot easier when it's fresh. A lot of fat on this deer. Some hunters say that when there's a lot of fat on a deer this early in the season that we're in for a cold winter. And if that's an indicator, I better get ready for a long, cold winter because this deer has got a lot of body fat.
Now, I'm showing you how to take care of this deer, how to process this deer without cutting through bone. Now, I will cut through the bone just to cut the, the feet off from the legs and the feet off from the front quarters. And I will also cut through the neck. But those are the only areas that I will be cutting, cutting through. And I'll show you a trick for doing that. Um, some people that are concerned about chronic wasting disease, uh, they recommend that you cut, not cut through bone. But um, I do cut off the legs and cut off the front feet and cut, cut the head off using a, actually I use a limb cutter and I'll show you that. There's a lot of fat here on the inside. Get as much of that out as we can. Now I'm going to step up on my ladder and I'm going to crank it up a little bit and we'll finish up with the front legs. Okay. Now what I want to do around the front legs is exactly what I did on the back legs. I don't have to worry about the, the tendons. because there's no support, so I don't have to worry about cutting those. I'm going to cut this right behind the joint on the lower part of the leg. Again, cut with your blade out as much as you can. When I start my cut, I go ahead and cut straight in. But when I go up under the inside of the leg, cut my, with my blade out. Now this is where my exit wound was on the deer, so there'd be a lot of um, meat destroyed in there. But we'll cut that out later. nice thing about skinning the deer down like this too is that the weight of the skin works with you. As you pull the skin down, the weight of it helps get it down. There is good meat on the neck. So we'll skin it way down on the neck. Now that's about as far as I want to go. Now this is a limb cutter that you get at a hardware store and uh, make sure it's clean but once you cut through the neck all the meat you can use that and you can cut the head off and it's very very efficient. And same way on the front legs cut through the meat get down to the bone. Take the legs off.
and now we're ready to quarter it. And uh, we're going to quarter this one and uh, chill it in an ice box with ice in it. And if even if it's a warm fall day, um, you can put it in an ice box with ice in it for a couple of three days, and it'll be okay. We'll take this inside my house later, and we'll debone it. But for now, we just want to quarter it up and put it in an ice chest. So uh, the first thing that you're going to want to remove once you've skinned the deer is you're going to want to take out the tenderloins, which are right here on the inside of the deer. There are these two st strips of meat right here. You want to detach the tenderloin at the top or the base of the leg, and you can pull that tenderloin straight down the back and it will come out just like that and that's one tenderloin there are two tenderloins on every deer and that's the most tender uh, delicious meat that you can eat I'm gonna set this on my table we'll get back to that later let's take this one out okay now I'm going to turn it around this area back here is a loin area a lot of times they call it the back strap I'm going to cut some of this fat off the back here. This meat in here is normally called strap meat. It can be used um, for soups, but part of the wild flavor of venison comes from the fat especially if you're in an area where they don't eat corn a lot, but they eat acorns. I don't um, try to save the rib cage area, but I have eaten barbecue that was made from the ribs being cut up and pressure cooked with barbecue sauce, and it was quite delicious. But it doesn't yield much meat for the amount of work that it is. Now don't let this process be intimidating to you. I can probably um, quarter a deer and butcher it out in about three hours. When you compare that to a hundred dollars or so that at the very least it'll cost you to go to a butcher to have it done, it's a very economical way to have a lot of venison on hand that you can enjoy for the winter. Most of these cuts that I'm going to show you are really simple cuts. And again, I'm not a butcher. I'm, I'm a hunter, but I don't want to pay the prices to be able to have it professionally butchered. So I'll just show you the simple way to take care of your meat. And uh, you'll, you'll be glad that uh, you've started processing your own venison. Now, after I've taken off some more of this fat, this area on each side of the backbone here, is the loin strips and we're going to make some little butterfly steaks out of these but first we want to pull the entire the entire strap just going to cut in here and cut down the back and most of these lines that I'm showing you are natural lines um, it's easy to to cut with the grain of the meat and remove the meat the way that it naturally comes off the bone. And you can see this is pulling away from the rib cage. This is the rib cage area. It's pulling away quite nicely. And you can run that all the way down. And that's, that's a strip of loin. That will make um, probably a dozen or so butterfly steaks. Lay that right there on the table. Do the other side. I'm going to hit my knife a couple of times here. Now I'm going to take out the 
the front leg and we're going to cut behind the shoulder bone. Now the shoulder blade extends really deeply into the carcass of the deer and I've started my cut up under the front leg and I'm extending that cut all the way up to, to the near the back side of the ribs and we're going to take that out. And again you're cutting along with the with the grain of the meat and so it should come off really nicely. I'm going to take some of that neck meat with it and we'll make that into hamburger meat. And I'm just going to lay this into my cooler. I'll put a bag of ice in underneath it here in a little bit and then we'll just close it up and keep it there until we're ready to butcher it. We'll do the same to this side here. Separate that out. I'm going to cut this right down this neck here. Open that up. All right, now that I've taken the neck meat off that I want, the front, front uh, legs off, I'm not going to try to salvage any meat off of the rib cage. You can, like I said, you can, you can cut these ribs apart and you can pressure cook them with the, and then add barbecue sauce, but uh, it is a lot of work and there's a lot of fat in them. So. Now I'm just going to cut down these. backbone here down the hindquarters into the backbone. Now I'm going to cut in around this pelvic bone and again you don't have to cut through any bone. You can cut the meat as close as you can. And what you'll want to do is cut through till you get to the socket. And you'll be able to see the socket because it's a ball, just like a, a regular hip joint. There's the socket right there. And there's a ball, and, and I'm going to actually cut around that until I can pull that. Finish off separating it. All right, now I've got this hind quarter separated. Now I'm going to leave it up here and I'm going to re, uh, remove this pelvic bone. Do the same thing over here. Now I've I've left some meat here on the pelvic area. I can take it over and just use my table. And this will make this meat from the pelvic area will make great hamburger meat. So you can trim that up as much or as little as you want. Now I've got my two hindquarters hanging here. All I have to do is step up on the ladder, cut these free. Um, try not, obviously, to let them drop, so you're going to want to cut them in, in a way that you're able to uh, protect them from hitting the ground. I'm going to use my knife and, and my limb cutters again. Cut the meat around the bone. Again, I don't want to cut through that tendon because that will cause the, cause the uh, leg to drop.
this back down here. Now I've cut through all the, the bone here. I can support this the leg, get a good grip on that. Cut that loose, cut that tendon. And put that in the cooler. Well, we finished quartering the deer. I'm going to put some fresh gloves on and then I'm going to put this meat into a gallon sized freezer bags. This is my loin and my tenderloin and I'm going to seal it up and put it in this cooler. I'm going to take my ice and I'm going to put it into gallon sized bags too and I'm going to seal it up so that the water doesn't leak onto the meat and cause it to draw the blood out. I'm going to keep this meat really cold for the next two days or so until I'm ready to debone it, package it, and freeze it. I'm going to keep some out and I'm going to make some delicious meals and I'm going to give you some great recipes. It's going to make your family glad that you took up bow hunting for deer.